Let's talk about the notion of linear independence and dependence of vectors. Um, the way I often like to introduce this is uh, first, I like to ask questions about spanning, which is a different issue. And I don't want to confuse the two, but it seems to be pretty natural. We already know about spanning. And in particular, given a set of vectors, let's say, for example, uh, uvw, let's say, to be definite, let's say in R3, let me boldface those puppies. So if I have a set of vector, three vectors in R3, when do they span sort of all that we expect? And when do they not? And so that's a question. This is an external question. We've got this fixed set of vectors, u, v, w. And let's say maybe they looked like, oh, let's use a different color. Maybe they look like this. Maybe here's u, and here's v, and here's w. And if it make, if it, hopefully it looks like I'm trying to suggest that these guys are coplanar, because I am trying to suggest that. <coughs> it's the world's worst parallelogram to represent a plane. And so I'm looking at a rather special case where they're coplanar. What if we had vectors that looked like this? Could we span everything in R3 with these guys. There's definitely ways to take three vectors and span everything. If you took i, j, and k, those span everything in R3. But these u, v, and w are special. They're coplanar. They do not span everything. So that's an external question. Can we create some other random vector of, our, of, of somebody else's choice, maybe, out of these three given vectors? And the answer here is no. So the, it's nice to be able to turn that into an internal question. Is there something we can say just about how u, v, and w relate to each other that's explaining how that they're special and that they're kind of deficient? And one way I like to say that is we can observe that this set is redundant. OK. And I want to make that precise. OK, so let's, let's suppose that in this case, let's say the picture I basically wrote, wrote w as the sum of. So suppose that I want to see what, what this word redundant means. We're going to make it very precise. Suppose that I have w is equal to u plus v, like in the picture. Although, actually, you know what? That's going to be a little too special. Let's, let's change it a little bit. Let's say 2u plus 3v. I should have been more careful in my picture. I can do that by just rescaling my u and v a little bit. So let's say if I go twice this and three times this guy. So I go um, twice this guy and three times v. There's my 3v. Here's my 2u. OK. So suppose I have this fact. Okay. So that is one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. Okay. Then so now suppose I want to make some other vector, let's say x as a combination of those three. And so that's going to be like maybe uh C1, oops, I don't want bold. So C1 times U plus C2 times V, it's bolding exactly the wrong things, plus C3 times W. Okay, let me just fix the bolding a little bit. So suppose I want to make this other vector X as a combination of these three. Well, do I really need the w here? Whatever I can make as a combination of u and v and w, I can make as a combination of just u and v, because c three, because this guy is a combination of the other three, of the other two rather. So this is just 
I just put in this in parentheses. Okay, so here w was redundant, and it's always going to be redundant if it can be make be made as a combination of the others. So if even at this external question, what can I make with the span? It's suggesting that if there's this internal relationship between the vectors, that's going to affect how much I can make with the span because this explains why I'm only getting two a two-dimensional subset of R3 out of this because it's not really three vectors that I've got here. I've got the vectors u and v, and then the vector w is secretly just a combination of those, and in terms of making linear combinations of u, v, and w, that's not going to help. Okay. And so our first proposal for the precise definition of a redundant set of vectors would be that um, one vector in the set it can be made as a linear combination of the others. The problem is that's unfair. Okay, This is unfair to one vector and it tends to single it out unfairly. You really, we really shouldn't say that w is at fault here for making the span smaller than it ought to be because I could solve this equation for u or for v very easily. Okay, And so a more symmetrical version is what we're just going to do is we're going to take everything on one side. And we're going to observe that the reason these guys were um, a redundant set of vectors is that if I take 2u plus 3v minus w, oh, it's bold, but now you're going to have to make it normal, is equal to 0. Okay. So what we say is that, and here's the official terminology, and this is our replacement for the, the vague terminology redundant. We say that this set, u, v, and w, is linearly dependent if there is, and I'm going to insert a, word, a really crucial word in a second here, but I'm not going to do it yet, of these vectors, which gives 0 let's say the zero vector to be really ex explicit. Okay. So let me, let me uh, italicize that because it's a definition. Okay. But here's one problem. There's one problem with this guy because I, no matter what three vectors I give you, I can always find a linear combination of those that gives a zero vector. Think about that for a second if you're watching this and have never um, seen anything more anything about this previously. I claim that if I pick UV and W and you allow me to pick these coefficients whatever I want them to be, it is not hard to make the zero vector. And the reason is I could pick all the coefficients to be zero. Okay. So what I need is one crucial word, non-trivial linear combination of these vectors, which gives the zero vector. So that's our version of redundant. If there's a non-trivial linear combination, in other words, not all coefficients zero. If some of them are zero, it's okay. So, for example, if I had a set of UV, I have UV and W, uh, the set of vectors, three vectors, and what I have is the equation that, let's say, I'm just going to take out the W here. Suppose I have that 2U plus 3V equals 0. That's certainly still saying they're redundant because U can be made just out of V or V can be made just out of U. And so this set is definitely going to be redundant even though I'm putting in w with a 0 in front of it, a coefficient. Okay, It's only when I use all zeros that it doesn't count. Okay, So this is almost the definition in the book, um, but there's a little bit of a difference. Okay, So we would say that the set of vectors is linearly independent if it's not dependent. Now, let's accentuate the positive here. Most definitions, we actually want to focus on independence. It's really a matter of taste. We could focus on dependence, which is kind of a, often people feel like it's a bad situation because it's redundant, and then just say independent is if the bad situation doesn't happen. Okay. Well, so an alternative is to rephrase it so we can just focus on the positive. What's a good way of saying linearly independent? Okay. 
So we're approaching the book's definition very quickly. So we say, and I'm going to go ahead and go to a, a set that's not just three vectors, because it really applies to any number of vectors in any dimension. Okay, We say that the set of vectors, let's say um, v1 through vk, and k can be anything. And these vectors can be in any dimension. And so I'll put that, let's say, in Rn. Are linearly independent, not redundant, if, and we're going to rephrase this just in just a second, if there is no non trivial linear combination of these vectors that makes the zero vector. And here's the problem. We were trying to accentuate the positive, and I've got no non. Uh, it's like a lot of double negative stuff. OK. So here's the better version. OK, I'm just going to say, I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to use a little bit of logic. I'm going to say, go ahead. Give me a combination that makes zero. I dare you. Whenever I have a combination of these vectors, that is equal to 0. So remember, now we're trying to do independence. We're trying to say, we're trying to say this isn't possible. And yet, then we just dared somebody to do it. Hmm, that seems weird. But remember, there was this ex exceptional case. And that's about the non-trivial. Okay. So we say that these guys are going to be independent, not redundant, if the only way we could actually solve this equation, the only way that we could put them together to make 0, it must have it must be the trivial solution. OK, so first, that's just very positive. And it starts out with an equation. What's really great for proofs about this is it actually gives you something to start with. If you want to show independence, you have an equation to write down and start manipulating. That's a really good place to be. So that's one reason why it's better than the, the other kinds of approaches to a definition. OK, so this is really, this is the state of the art. This is the best definition, basically. That's the standard definition you'll see in just about every book. That they're linearly independent if, and it, it just feels a little weird. That's why you know, it took 12 minutes and 45 seconds leading up to it. It seems unexpected, but it's really just a nicer version. It's, a, it's more symmetrical, and it's more positive, and it's more useful for proofs and algebra. And there's another aspect to it. Okay, This says, this is actually something we've done before. Okay, Because how do you actually solve an equation like this? This is a vector equation. It says that if I make A to be the matrix with these guys as columns, uh, I don't know why I, did, I went out of math mode there. I didn't need to do that. If I make that matrix as, as columns, then this is exactly that matrix times a vector of coefficients C, C, C1 through CK um, that the only solution to ax equals 0 is the 0 vector. And guess what? That's exactly what we've been thinking about in the previous section, OK, is the trivial one, OK? Or in other words, that it has a unique solution. So it turns out, so here's a connection, very important, between linear independence and uniqueness. Remember, the two huge questions in mathematics are existence and uniqueness. It turns out that linear independence in disguise is a question about uniqueness of solutions to equations. Okay, And we're going to see further connections as well. But this that's another payoff for writing it in this way. We've got a vector equation about a linear combination of fixed vectors. That turns into a matrix equation. And then, of course, we can use RREF and just all of our methods to, to answer this question. It makes it. Um, very straightforward to actually answer for fix a fixed set of vectors, are they independent? You make the matrix, you see if there's a non-trivial solution to AX equals zero, we know how to do that with, with the reduced rational form. Okay, good place to stop.